What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another GANT4 video. Today, I'm super excited to show you guys this project I've been working on. I've developed my first GANT4 application. So I'm super excited to show it off. Uh, I called it Photon Dose Sim. So the goal for this project was to create a very simple GANT4 application that basically has one particle gun that shoots photons, one detector that should hopefully register when the photons hit, and then I wanted it to um, give me back like how much dose the detector got. Uh, so let's get right into it. All right, guys. So here on the screen, what you're seeing is my application. So on the left side, we have the viewer. This is the detector right here that I created. And then on the right side is going to display the dose that the photons give. So if I click over here and do test run, let's wait for a second. Awesome. Cool. So it shoots about 100 photons into the detector. And you can see they're scattering all over the place. And then over here on the right side, it gives us the cumul cumulated dose per run. Uh, so we got about 1.8 picogray. All right, everybody. So if you want to try this project out for yourself, uh, let me just walk you through how to download it and compile it on your own machine. Um, so the first thing you need to do is here on my GitHub, I have some instructions, but you need to have CMake installed on your computer. So here's the CMake website. CMake just helps you compile C++ applications so you can use them. All right. And then you're also going to need Visual Studio and a C++ compiler. And you also need the GANT for source code. And so I have another video of a tutorial how to install GANT4 on your computer. So if you haven't had GANT4 installed, you're not going to be able to run my project. So if you want to install that, just click the link and uh, go to my video, how to install GANT4. All right, guys. So let me just quickly demonstrate how you, you would download my project if you have all of those prerequisites. So I'm going to click here on code. I'm going to go ahead and download the zip file. All right, so here's my zip file. I'm going to go ahead and extract it. OK, so here's my extracted zip file, right? Um, this CMake list file is how we're going to compile the project. So if you go and go ahead and open CMake, I like to use the CMake GUI because uh, for me, it's a lot easier. But you can also do this from the command line if you're really comfortable with CMake and stuff. So what we can do is just go over to this CMake lists text file and you can just drag it into the CMake GUI. Then it automatically puts in where the source code is, which is in my downloads folder in the Photon Dose Sim folder. And then I'm going to create a new directory for the build because it's going to build a bunch of binaries and stuff. So I entered in build right there. I'm going to go ahead and configure. And it says build directory does not exist. Yes, I'm going to create it. And I'm using Visual Studio, so I'm going to click Finish. And then pretty soon it will configure my project. All right, everybody, the CMake finished configuring. And everything looks good here. So I'm going to generate and open project. This is going to open up Visual Studio. And then we'll be able to compile the example so we can actually run it. And the nice thing about this is that if you're on a Mac, uh, you can compile it for Mac. And if you're on a Windows or Linux, you know, you can compile it on any operating system and it should work. Um, I haven't tried it on Mac, but the idea is that using CMake, it should be able to work on any operating system. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio. If you look over here on the right, we have the Solution Explorer. Uh, just right click on Photon Dose Sim right there and click Build. Then down here, you'll see the progress. Shouldn't take too long, maybe five minutes or so to build. If everything goes well, it'll display down here. Build two succeeded, zero failed. So if any of them failed, we might have to rebuild it. But now if we go back into that folder we are in, um, you'll see we have this new build directory that was created. Double click on that. And then if you go down, there's a folder called release. Click on that. And here we have our application. So it's going to be an executable file. If you double click on this, it should run the project. There you go. 
that's exactly the project. And then again, if you want to do the test run, you go in here, double click on test run, and it'll do that test run. All right, guys. So now I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the code. Um, GNT4 has tons of, you know, abstract classes, virtual, you know, methods. Um, it's a lot to take in. So what I've done just to help you guys out is I created a couple of infographics to kind of understand how GNT4 is organized. So here in my uh, GitHub repository, you can click here on the GNT4 basic organization infographic. And I'm just going to walk through this real fast to kind of get a basic understanding of how a GNT4 app is organized. So the most basic GNT4 app, you have your main file, um, you know, your C++ file, and then you need to include a run manager class. So this is in GNT4 source code. There's a run manager abstract class, and you need to create your own class that inherits this class as a base class, and you need to put your own uh, logic in there. So then the run manager needs three other classes added into it in order to work. The first one's primary generator action. That is where you generate your particles, and it's they call it like a particle gun. That's why you have a little gun right there. Uh, so it's going to generate whatever particle you choose. For my project, I did gamma ray photons, but you protons, neutrons, neutrinos, like whatever your heart desires, really. Next, you need a physics list. And so this is kind of like the physics processes that go into it. Um, there's a lot of physics that goes behind particle interactions and stuff. And so uh, you need to include a physics list. There's a lot of options of physics list, depending on what project you want to do. And then the last part is detector construction. So you need to have some kind of geometry. If you saw in my project, it was that big square in the middle of everything. Uh, you need something to for the particle to interact with, and then that's where you're going to get your data. Because otherwise, you're just shooting particles into the void, into nothing, and there's not really a point. So you need detector construction um, as one of these required three classes. All right, so that was the basic GNT4 structure. Now I'm going to go to the Photon Dose Sim infographic. And this is kind of going over my organization because I kind of added a few things onto it. First of all, we have our main function, like usual. And then here's all the classes I included. I have the UI executive that's going to open a UI so we can work with the application. I have my run manager, which I'll go into in a second. Scoring manager. Um, so every time a particle hits the detector, you want to register that and use that in the scoring manager. Viz manager, obviously, so I could have that display and show my detector, show the particles hitting it so I know kind of what's going on. All right, so in the run manager, like I said, the this is the one that's required for every app. Um, like I said, you need the three things. You need physics list, you need a primary generator action, and detector construction, right? So for my physics list, I use the QBBC physics list. So I just chose it because... I haven't really done tons of research into these, but they're good for like quantum physics, high energy stuff. So I figured, and it worked fine. So I used it. For the detector, I just have a world and one single detector. That's all. But for this middle part, um, there's other actions you can add in. You don't have to only do primary generator action. So this class action initialization, this is provided by GNT4 as well. They have a they have an abstract class that you need to, um, you know, extend to your own class. And so this is really nice because you can initialize all the other actions in this one class. So I do have a action initialization class. And then the four actions that I have put into that class are my primary generator. <laughs> There's a lot of big words in this. So sorry, I'm like mumbling, but primary generator action. Uh, this is basically generates a particle gun that shoots gamma photons of the energy 6 MeV. Then I have run action. So this sets up a run, which is basically going to display the dose at the end, like the Pico grays that you saw. And it's also going to like start the run shooting the particles. Event action. So a run is made up of many small events. And so what each event is, is one particle shooting and the dose 
gets added to the total dose. That's what happens in each event. And then stepping action is one more thing. Each step the particle goes in its like journey, because obviously it's a computer it divides it into like small steps. Um, if the particle is inside the detector, the stepping action class sends a message to the event action class telling it like, okay, it's time to put in the dose to the detector. Real quick how it runs. There's two ways to run my application. If you just click on the file, it just opens the big UI and everything. And you can do it in interactive mode, which is what I prefer. But there's another way. If you run it from the command line and put in as an argument, whatever Mac file you want to run with it, it runs a lot faster because it doesn't have to display all the visualization. And finally, because I had the uh, UI manager included, uh, I'm allowed to use Mac files, which is, I'll show you guys that as well, but basically they're file with a lot of commands. And if you just click on the file, it runs all those commands in order. So the three Mac files I have are init viz, which basically sets up the visualization screen and everything. And then it automatically calls the viz Mac file at the end. Uh, viz Mac, this basically displays all the geometry, displays the detector, and whenever the particle shoots, it will display the path of the particle. And then the last one is test run, which um, you could run a lot more in my application. You could run like a thousand, a million, 10 to the power of 10 particles. But in the test run, I just did a hundred particles shooting at the detector, shooting at the detector. So that way it doesn't take like an hour to run. All right, guys, hopefully that infographic helped you to kind of understand how my program is organized. Um, I'm going to end this video for now, but here's my project. If you look over here on the right side, we have all these classes I talked about, the action initialization, detector construction, run action, etc., as well as the Mac files and stuff like that. Um, comment down below if you want me to create a second video actually walking through each of these files, because I'd be happy to do that. But uh, for this video, it's going to get really long if I do that. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, good luck on your GN4 applications, and I'll see you later.